some of the Sanskrit names and if I do introduce a Sanskrit name I will follow it with the English name and we're just gonna go through a pretty quick flow here just to give you some basics teach you some of the alignment cues and welcome to yoga so we'll start in Sukhasana an easy seated position or easy pose as you'll hear it called with our ankles crossed our sits bones or our booty flush with the mat you may need to move the fleshy parts of the booty to the side so you get that nice grounding feeling um, on your mat feeling connected with the earth beneath you you want to sit up nice and tall and imagine there's a seed planted at the base of your spine and as the seed begins to grow it comes up your back you start to sit up a little bit taller as it enters your chest, maybe you open across the collarbone, bring your shoulders back and down a little bit, resting your hands on your knees, palms facing down, lifting our chin so it's parallel with our mat here, and lifting our head, imagining if a tiny string was connected to the top of your head and someone was gently pulling it up towards the sky. So we're not looking up, it's just that keeping our spine nice and straight, keeping that length in our spine. So from here, you wanna start taking nice, slow, deep inhales through the nose, and exhale through the mouth, maybe closing your eyes here, or lowering your gaze towards the floor just in front of you. This allows us to stay present. So a big part of yoga is learning how to stay present and in the moment. Throughout our lives, we're often pulled in a lot of different directions. We often worry about what's next. And yoga is just about right now and enjoying this very moment. So take another nice big inhale through the nose. And exhale out the mouth. One more inhale and exhale at your own pace. Now on your next inhale, we're going to sweep our arms up and overhead, our biceps by our ears, and then we're gonna take a nice gentle twist to the right here, bringing our left hand to our right knee or our right thigh, tenting our fingertips, um, our right fingertips behind our back, as close or as far away as is comfortable. And for this twist, we'll just gaze over to the right. We're gonna Inhale to lift and lengthen. Imagine that seed planted in our backs once again, lifting us up. And exhale to twist just a little further, maybe. Inhale to lift and lengthen your spine. Exhale to go a little deep in your twist. Maybe you look over that right shoulder towards the back of your mat. Inhale one more time. And exhale, we'll come back to center. From here, we'll raise our hands up one more time. Inhale, and exhale, we'll twist to the left, bringing our right hand to our left knee. Our left hand will tent behind us, our fingertips tented here. And we'll inhale to lift, lengthen. Imagine that string pulling from the top of your crown again. And exhale to twist just a little bit further. The reason we do this here is we want to bring flexibility and mobility into our spines here. Inhale one more time and exhale to come back to center. From here we're going to move into a tabletop position. So we'll be on our hands and knees on our mat. In a tabletop position we want a nice flat back here with our spine straight from our tail to our crown. Again, imagine that seed planted in the base of our spine, but instead of growing upward, we're growing straight. Our shoulders are going to be stacked above our wrists. We want our palms nice and wide with the fingertips spread out so we can distribute that weight evenly. We want our knees below our 
hips here. And from here, we're going to move into some cat and cow pose or Vitalasana Marjariasana. So in your cow pose, you're going to drop the belly, lift the tailbone, lift the chin, look forward. Our chest. Inhale, drop the belly, lifting our chin, lifting our tailbone. Maybe you give your tail a little wag here. And exhale into your cat pose, arching the spine, trying to bring your belly button up towards your spine here. Doing a couple more at your own pace. Inhaling into your cat. And exhaling into your cat. It's another great way to bring mobility into the spine. Building that mobility and flexibility in your spine will help to alleviate back pain and will help you prevent injury. So we'll come back to a neutral spine here with a flat back. And from here we're just gonna give our wrists a little stretch here. So we're going to rock back and forth over our wrists. A lot of us often don't do much weight bearing work in our wrists. So this is a great way to prep for any weight bearing exercises. We will we'll only be doing one standing pose here today, but in general in a yoga class, you might do some poses involving putting some weight on your wrist. So this is a great way to stretch. Then we'll turn our palms so that our fingertips are facing the edges of our mat and just go side to side, giving our wrists a stretch in this direction. And then we'll bring our right hand to face towards us and our left hand will face forward. And we'll just rock back and forth here, stretching in this direction. You can do both at the same time, but that might be a little bit intense. So we're gonna do one at a time today. And then we'll switch the palms. So the right hand will face forward and the left hand will face towards us. And we'll rock back and forth here. From here, we'll bring both of our palms to face forward. We'll bring our big toes to touch and we'll extend our knees as wide as our mat here or as wide as is comfortable. I know some of us don't have as much flexibility in our hips as others and that's perfectly fine. Do what you can here. And then we're going to stick our hips towards our heels for balasana or a child's pose. And this is an extended child's pose. We're going to reach our arms forward, bring our chest down towards the mat, and sink our hips nice and low. If this is uncomfortable, feel free to keep those hips lifted. Maybe you bring a block, something like this, behind you to help support you in this pose. And then we're just going to sink our hips down, bring our chest bringing your forehead to the mat. This is a great way to stretch the shoulders, stretch the hips, and to really focus on the moment. You may rock your forehead side to side here, giving your forehead a massage, bringing it back and forth here. A lot of us carry a lot of tension, in our shoulders, in our hips, and in our faces, especially our foreheads. So this is a great way to ease some of that. A couple more breaths in your child's pose here. And then we'll come back up to a tabletop position. Our bodies stacked with the shoulders above the wrists and our hips above our knees.
And from here, we're gonna take our dog for a walk or as we say, pedal out our feet, lifting one heel, dropping the other to the ground, to the mat, and then switching to the opposite. Like you're walking in place here. Maybe you nod your head yes a couple times. Shake your head no. And maybe you bring your heels down. You don't have to bring your heels all the way to the mat. Most of us can't do that anyways. And just take a couple moments of stillness here. Remembering to breathe. In every yoga class, in every pose, in every situation, always remember to breathe. If you can breathe, you are alive, and being alive is the greatest gift any of us have been given, right? Beautiful. So now we're going to drop our knees, returning to our tabletop position here, and we're going to move into a low lunge. So we're going to bring our right foot forward in between our hands, keeping our knees stacked above our ankles. You may want to scoot this left leg back a little bit, keeping the top of your foot down on your mat, and then lift yourself up. If you have blocks, this may be a good time to bring a block on either side so you can bring the ground up to your palms. You may keep your hands on the ground here or on top of your knee, whatever is comfortable for you. Most yoga classes have some variation of a lunge, whether it's a high lunge, low lunge, crescent lunge. So this is a great introduction to our lunge position here. Remember to keep our back nice and straight. Lift our chest, lift our chin. Inhale. And exhale, we'll bring that right foot back to meet the left in our tabletop position. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So in yoga, it's very important to balance out either side. If we practice balance on the mat, we can then take that balance off of the mat and bring it into our lives. Never perfect, but it's the intention. So we're gonna bring that left foot forward in between our hands and do a low lunge on this side. Again, you can have your hands on the ground, on the mat, on your knee, whatever's comfortable for you. Bringing that chest forward, look forward, inhale, exhale, and then we'll bring that left foot back to meet our right foot in a tabletop position. From here, we're going to cross our ankles, sit back, and extend our feet out straight in front of us. That's my favorite method of getting into this pose. If you have a more comfortable way that you prefer, by all means, this is your practice. Modify it how it's going to work for you in your body. You are the expert in your body. I'm just a guide. So do what works for you. You may want to have a bend in your knees. Some folks like to have a block because they are a little bit tight in the hamstrings. So you do you, boo. We're going to sit up nice and tall, imagining that seed again in our spine, growing in length up and through the top of our head our palms flush with the mat here our toes pointed kind of towards our face a little bit sit up nice and tall inhale and exhale on our next inhale we'll rise our hands up with our biceps by our ears and then we'll hinge forward leading with our chest for poshi bonasana or a seated forward bend your hands can rest wherever they land, whether that's here, here, your feet. We want to keep that length in our spine here. Again, you can bend your knees. In fact, I encourage it. And then inhale and exhale to fold. This is a great lower back stretch. If you're experiencing lower back pain, I highly recommend incorporating this stretch into your routine. It's a great way to relieve some of that tension in the lower back. One more inhale and exhale. Maybe you find a little more space this time. Beautiful. So we're going to slowly roll ourselves back up to our seated position, one vertebra at a time. 
and then we're going to bring our feet flat to the mat, scoot our butt towards our heels, and lower ourselves down to our backs. We'll bring our knees to our chest, giving ourselves a nice big hug, and maybe we rock side to side a little bit. Massaging that lower back, feeling that connection of the earth on our back supporting us. And then we'll bring our feet back down to the mat. Our back will be flush on the mat. You might need to tilt your pelvis to get that connection. And you want to bring your heels back until you can feel the tips of your fingers brushing against your heels. And we're going to move into a bridge pose. So from here, if you have a block, you can grab that, lifting your hips and placing the block underneath the base of your pelvis for a supported bridge. If you don't have a block, that's fine. You're going to lift your hips, keeping a nice ramp kind of a situation from your knees to your hips. Trying to keep your knees together. Imagine if you have a block between your legs that you're trying to hold in place here. And we'll hold for a moment with our palms pressed on the ground. Inhale. And exhale to lower down one vertebra at a time. Give yourself a nice big hug again, bringing your knees into your chest, rocking side to side. And then we're going to keep our right knee hugged into our chest and extend our left foot down onto the ground with our feet flexed. Give your right knee a little squeeze here and then use your left hand to guide your right knee over to the left for a supine twist. Your right arm can extend over to the right and you can look up at the sky or over towards your right hand. both knees a little squeeze and then we'll extend our right leg forward and down keeping our left knee hugged in before using our right hand to guide our left knee over to the right side of our mat extending our right our, excuse me our left arm of the earth supporting your back and then we'll release into our shavasana our final resting pose a foot on either corner of your mat your arms will be down on the mat with your palms facing forward we'll take a nice big inhale and exhale to feel our weight release completely into the mat One more nice deep inhale. Taking in all this beautiful energy we cultivate during our practice. And exhale to let go of anything that doesn't serve you any longer. We'll rest here in our Shavasana for a few moments. Soaking in the moment. So wiggle your fingers and your toes, maybe give your ankles and wrists a few twirls in one direction, and then another. Before turning over onto your side, using your top arm as a pillow in a fetal position, taking a moment to reflect on your practice, 
extending gratitude to the self for coming to the mat today. If this is your first time on the mat, welcome. I'm so proud of you for taking your first step in your yoga journey and I hope you are proud of yourself because the hardest part is coming to the mat and look, you did it. You completed your first practice. It's amazing. Take a nice deep breath here and use this top hand to bring yourself up to a nice, comfortable, easy seated position. From here, we'll take an inhale, rising our hands up and overhead, bringing our palms together and exhale our hands to heart center in prayer. Thank you so much for coming to the mat today. Welcome to yoga. It's a beautiful practice. It's something that has changed my life and I hope that you continue to come back to the mat 